Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel for another car review. Believe it or not, for the first time ever, we have a Lincoln to review, which is a 1976 Lincoln Continental town car. Yes, a Lincoln, the arch nemesis, the biggest competitor to Cadillac, my favorite car brand, but I figured it's always good to know what else is out there. But before we get started, I would like to thank all of my subscribers for subscribing to the channel. We have reached well over 10,000 subscribers just over in the last couple weeks, which is a really big accomplishment. And I wanna thank you all so much for that. However, only about 10% of people who watch my videos are actually subscribed. So if you could subscribe, it would be a huge help it's free and you can always unsubscribe later. Also, I do wanna make sure everyone is aware that I now have merchandise. If you're in need of a new hat, jacket, or shirt, you can click the link in the description below. Also on that website is plenty of General Motors merchandise, which includes all of their brands, including the classic ones as well. There's plenty of nice stuff on there, so you can feel free to check that out. But next, let's go ahead and start talking about this 1976 Lincoln Continental Town Car. Before we start the review of this particular Lincoln, I'd like to give a brief history of this model as well as the Lincoln brand. Now, Lincoln was founded in 1917 by Henry Leland, and ironically, he was actually the same founder of the Cadillac brand, which would become Lincoln's biggest rival. But Ford eventually decided to purchase Lincoln in 1922 to be their luxury division. And what's really fascinating is that Henry Ford's son, Edsel Ford, played a momentous role in buying the Lincoln brand and also running the brand itself. And Edsel is even quoted as saying, father made the most popular cars in the world, I want to make the best. And arguably, Lincoln did make some of the best cars, including this Continental. And being a 1976 Continental town car, what exactly does that represent? The Continental name is the name of the model, whereas Town Car designates the highest end trim level. However, Continental was renamed Town Car for the seventh generation Town Car in 1981, but at this time it was still known as the Continental Town Car. So, what sort of history did the Continental name have? When the Continentals were first built in the 1940s, it was meant to be a personal luxury car. This put an emphasis on personality, impeccable comfort, and a little hint of sportiness. The Continental name and image did evolve over the years, sometimes a bit confusingly. It first became Ford's flagship brand with the Continental Mark II in the mid-1950s. We've actually seen a few of these cars on the channel before, and they would have competed with the Cadillac Eldorado Brome from the mid-1950s as well. Both of those were some of the most expensive American cars ever to be built. But the Continental name eventually developed into the Mark series from the 1960s through the 1980s. There were also Continental branded coupes and sedans in the 1970s to smaller, more economical sedans from the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s, which competed mostly with the Cadillac Seville. And finally, the Continental name went out with a bang in 2016 when they introduced a full-size luxury sedan. This was discontinued in 2020 with no planned successor. However, even with all of these models, luxurious features, and good looks, Lincoln always seemed to be in the shadow of its biggest competitor, Cadillac. And seemingly, looking at the production numbers for 1976 reflects this, Lincoln only sold about 125,000 cars compared to Cadillac's 309,000. However, I do believe that the town car may have outsold the biggest rival it had, the Cadillac Fleetwood, but I do think there is more to a car brand and its cars than just the production numbers. So, without further ado, let's start the review and see what this Continental Town Car has to offer. Let's start off the review by taking a look at the front end of the Lincoln Continental Town Car. And the most important thing up here would be the Lincoln badge. It is right up here on top of the grille, just in front of the hood. It of course moves and is spring-loaded to protect for pedestrians or so it doesn't break off as easily. There is also a large grille at the front of the Continental. It has a vertical design and looks pretty clean and elegant. I also do like the big chrome bumper up front. It is one of those five mile per hour bumpers, so it's absolutely massive. And one of my favorite things up here is that it has pop-up headlights. 
It's really cool is when you engage the headlights and turn them on, they flip over and reveal themselves. It's apparently all controlled by vacuums, a pretty cool thing, and also helps to clean up the front end design to make it look a bit more elegant. And Lincoln decided to put the Lincoln Continental badge on the left headlight. And what I think is the most beautiful thing up front is the glass housings for the turn signals. Firstly, they do kind of come to a point, kind of like a fin at the front of the car, which is a very unique design detail. But I just love the way the glass looks with the chrome insert around the glass itself. Moving along to the side of the Continental Town Car, we can see this car's massive length from here. It is about 232.9 inches long, quite massive, but this was a full-size sedan for the time. And on the front end of the Continental, in true American luxury car fashion, we do have our cornering light here. Now what's interesting is that this cornering light turns on even in the daytime when your headlights are not on. I believe that Cadillacs at the time, their cornering lights would only turn on when the headlights were on at the same time. So it's interesting that Lincoln decided to have them on at all times. And taking a look at the wheels, there is a pretty nice large wheel cover there. Fairly simple looking, but it still does look luxurious. And what's kind of funny is that the valve stem caps have a little teeny tiny Lincoln logo on them. I'm sure no one would ever really notice this, but Lincoln did decide to put those there. And also on the front fender is the town car badge, designating that this is the highest end trim level of the Continental. And running along the tire length of this vehicle are several different things. There is a green pinstripe that runs all the way from the front fender all the way to the back. There's also a really cool chrome line that extends from the front of the car all the way across the top of the doors, all the way to the back end of the car, and that kind of helps to create the fin look at the front of the vehicle as well as in the back. And this chrome line also creates a little bit of space in between the edge of the door and the window. It's a pretty fascinating look. It almost looks like a divot in between there, but it's something that Continentals have had since the early 60s, and it's kind of neat that Lincoln decided to continue this design trend into their newer models. And there's also this really fancy looking green trim that runs along the side of the car. If you look closely at it, it has a really interesting design pattern on it. I believe this may have been the premium side moldings that Lincoln offered at the time, but I don't know that for sure, but it does look nice. There are also keyholes for both of the front two doors, as well as wheel skirts covering the rear wheels. And what I think is really nice looking on this particular Continental is this coach roof in the back. This is what Lincoln called it. It's essentially a Landau top where Half of the roof is covered in vinyl. There's also nice chrome up there, and it did come with a coach light, which lights up at nighttime. But something that is missing from the coach roof are the opera windows. Many Lincolns at this time offered opera windows, which were little oval-shaped windows in the back of the car. I believe this was an option, and this particular Continental was not optioned with it. Now moving along to the back end of the Lincoln Continental Town Car. Possibly my favorite design feature of the back end is the rear tail lights. It goes from all the way on the left side of the car all the way across the trunk to the right side. There are little teeny tiny Lincoln logos throughout the middle of the tail lights. A very cool look. And what's really neat is that Lincoln has continued this light bar design trend with their more modern cars. Also back here is a big chrome bumper just like the front. It is a five mile per hour bumper which was federally mandated at the time. There is also dual exhaust down here. However, I don't know if that is stock. Some of you Lincoln enthusiasts may have to inform me on that. And on the trunk itself, on the right side is the Lincoln script. And there's also a Lincoln badge in the middle of the trunk. It's also red. I think that must be a reflector as well, which I find fascinating. But what's really cool is that the Lincoln badge hides the keyhole to get into the trunk. And once you're ready to get inside of the trunk, all you have to do is put the key into the keyhole itself, twist, and the trunk opens like so. And inside of here, we have 20.2 cubic feet of space. Definitely a lot of room. But what Lincoln did that was really smart is they actually put the spare tire in a very convenient place. As you can see, it is actually placed in the back of the trunk, hidden away in a cubby hole. Many of the Cadillacs I've reviewed from this era do have spare tires, but they put it in the bottom of the trunk, which sometimes gets in the way. But the really cool thing about the trunk is that it is colored green, just 
just like the other green exterior bits of the car, which I was very surprised about. It's kind of more luxurious looking than I expected. And something that's especially nice is that Lincoln prepared Lincoln drivers for getting flat tires. On the right side of the trunk, there is a cubby space that you can reveal by pulling down the panel, and there is a jack inside of there as well as jacking instructions on the bottom of the trunk lid. And something that's really neat about using the jack is that there are actually slots in both sides of the rear bumper and front bumper to put the jack into, so then you can lift up the car to change the tire. But once you're done with the trunk, all you have to do, lower it, and kind of slam it shut like so. Unfortunately, there is no trunk pull down on this vehicle. I don't know if Lincoln even offered it or if that was more of a General Motors or Cadillac option, but it is not on this car, which is a bit depressing. So I did have to use more work to close this trunk. Next, let's take a look underneath the hood of the 1976 Continental Town Car and see what is under there. But the thing that I'm the most curious about is how heavy is this hood? Of course, the Cadillacs I've brought on the channel have been extremely heavy. So let's see. Ah. Ooh, goes up nicely. Honestly, I don't think it's quite as big as the Cadillac hoods I've had here on the channel. So I think it's a little bit lighter. So the hood beats out the Cadillacs. <laughs> but anyways, under here is the 7.5 liter 460 cubic inch V8 engine. This was a standard engine for Lincolns and they were only used in the Lincoln brand at this time. However, they aren't very powerful. They make about 202 horsepower and 353 pound-feet of torque. However, it does have a little bit more power than the 190 horsepower engine found in the Cadillac Fleetwood at the time. However, I don't think that 12 horsepower would make much of a difference in a drag race, especially with cars that weigh over 5,000 pounds. And as is typical with big American V8s and their cars at this time, they're very underpowered and not very economical or fuel efficient. And this stemmed from the oil crisis in the early 1970s, which caused for American automakers to be more environmentally friendly and have very weak engines put inside of their cars. Next, let's start up the 460 cubic inch V8 engine and hear how it sounds. Before we take a look at the interior of the Lincoln Continental, let's go ahead and take a look at the keys that came with this vehicle. Now, as you can see, there is a round key and more of a squared key. This is kind of similar to the Cadillac keys that I've brought you guys on this channel before, where the square one is meant to start the car, whereas the round one locks and unlocks the doors as well as the trunk. However, do keep in mind that these are not the original keys that came with this car. When the current owners bought it, they actually didn't have the keys with the car, so they had to have these ones made. However, I do believe that they still look a lot like the original ones with the Lincoln logo on there as well as this interesting pattern design. Overall, nice looking keys, very simple and easy to use. Now that we've taken a good look at the exterior of the Lincoln Continental Town Car, let's go ahead and take a look at the interior and see what it's like. Taking a look at the interior of this Continental Town Car, I'm really blown away with the looks. There's really nice leather, patterned wood, and cloth on the doors. There's a very nicely and beautifully designed dashboard and media velour seats, which look very soft and comfortable. And they even have a really intricate and beautiful looking pattern sewn into them. So Lincoln really paid close attention to the details of this interior. And I'm surprised to say it may even be more detailed than the interiors of Cadillacs at the time. So let's go ahead and step in the car and see what it's like. Yes, so nice. Now on the inside of the Continental Town Car, these seats are truly very soft, which is to be expected, but they really are truly 
very cushioned. You feel very relaxed in here. You just sink in. And I do also really like that these did come with the cloth or media velour seats. You could get leather on the town car, but this one was optioned with this cloth. And surprisingly, the controls to the seat are not by my thigh. They're actually on the door panel. There is a lever that moves the seat forwards and backwards, as well as two other levers that move the tilt of the seat. This actually did come with dual power seats as well, so the passenger has those same controls. However, there was also a reclining option. However, I don't believe that this car has it. There are also a few other controls on this door panel as well, including the buttons for the power windows, as well as the window lock and door locks and a little lever to adjust the driver's mirror. And what's really cool about these power windows is that there is also a power vent window. To use the vent window, all you have to do is pull down on the lever of the window of your choosing, and the vent window will move down first. And you can leave it this way if you're smoking or you just wanna have a little bit of air moving into the car. But then if you continue to hold down the button, the larger regular window will then lower. And then to raise the windows, all you have to do is push the button the other way, the larger window will raise first, and then the vent window will eventually rise. A very interesting design, and I don't think I have personally seen vent windows on a vehicle like this. Typically, I see them where they open up left and right rather than going to straight up and down. But there is something that I don't really like regarding the switches and buttons on the door here, is that it looks like there are stickers labeling everything. It kind of seems like an afterthought and really does not scream like a luxury car when you see those kinds of things. Next in front of me is the steering wheel. It is a two-spoke wheel. It has really nice wood on it, as well as a little Lincoln badge in the center of it. But what's really cool about it is that it is relatively futuristic. It actually has buttons on here for the cruise control. The one on the left turns on or off the cruise control, and the one on the right can be used to set the cruise control, accelerate, or coast. Pretty futuristic and also a nice safety feature so you don't have to take your hands off the steering wheel to set the cruise. And something that I really like about the steering wheel is that there is a very wide button on here to use the horn. As you can see, it's kind of placed within the wood and you push it in and that's how the horn works. And since we're talking about the horn, you might as well listen to it. <laughs> Yeah, not a bad sound, but honestly, I don't think I like it quite as much as the trumpet horns on the Cadillacs. And the steering wheel does also have a tilt function. To be able to use it, all you have to do is push back the turn signal stock on the left side, and then you can move the steering wheel up and down as needed. Kind of nice that you don't have an extra lever to be able to do that. It's hidden with the turn signal stock. Then on the right side of the steering column is a button for our hazard lights, our metal gear selector, and the ignition for the keys. Then behind the steering wheel on the dashboard are several gauges. There's a tripometer there, an odometer, as well as a really large speedometer, as well as several warning lights on the left side. It's all kind of placed within this really nice patterned wood. But the speedometer on this car is actually extremely impressive and possibly my favorite thing about this Lincoln Continental town car. When you drive the Continental and pick up speed, there is a white bar that appears on the left side of the speedometer with a red hash on the right side indicating what your current speed is. But what's really cool is that as you pick up speed, I do believe there is a point where the speedometer starts to turn red. That white bar will then continue as a red color once you hit that speed. I have no idea how it works, but it is one of the coolest speedometers I have ever seen, and it's in a 1976 Lincoln Continental. I never would have imagined it. And believe it or not, these are not the only gauges that are inside of this Continental. On the lower left section of the dashboard, there is a gauge for the alternator, as well as our fuel economy. And on the right side, there's another one as our temperature gauge. I'm pretty surprised that these are here because Cadillac at the time did not have the alternator or a temperature gauge in their cars. They probably figured it's too much information, but Lincoln decided it was important and so they put it in their cars. Also on the lower left side of the dashboard are several knobs. The one on the left is used to turn on or off the lights. You pull it out to turn on the lights, push it back in to turn them off. And the one on the right is used to control the windshield wipers. Turning the knob to the right will determine the speed of the windshield wipers. But if you turn it to the left, that is actually how you control the delay wipers of this car. And on the right side of the dashboard are the climate controls. There's a lever there to adjust the temperature as well as another lever to control what the climate control system does. And also on the dashboard here is a very fascinating looking Cartier clock. It is a digital clock. There is a seconds wheel that spins around, which then in turn moves the minute hand and so on and so forth. I just really love the looks of these clocks. They're very fascinating and kind of addicting to watch. And near the top of the dashboard is another silver lever. 
This one is to control the passenger side mirror of the car. There are also several lights here. One that says fasten belts, another one that says antenna, and another one that says electric de-ice. There are levers behind here to move the antenna up and down or to turn on or off the de-icer in the back. And to the right of these levers is a little map light. This can be turned on and off with the little black lever that is there. And there's also a radio in the dashboard. There are different presets and knobs here for it. You can turn on AM or FM radio. There are knobs to adjust the tone of the radio as well as to adjust the balance of the radio front and rear. And there is another lever beneath the radio and that one is to use to adjust the balance left and right. But something that surprises me the most about the radio is that it has the Ford logo on it. I'm kind of surprised that Lincoln decided to put that there even if it's a Ford product, it's probably something that the Lincoln buyers wouldn't have liked because they're buying a Lincoln, a luxury car, not a Ford. And this actually isn't the only place where I found a Ford logo on this car. There's another one on the coach light on the outside of the vehicle, maybe a little bit harder to see, but still, I'm surprised that Lincoln was okay with having Ford logos plastered all over their vehicle. There is also a glove box here, which has a good amount of storage inside of it, as well as a button in there to open the trunk out back. And to show off a little bit on this interior, Lincoln put Lincoln Town Car on the right side of the dashboard so the passengers can look at it and tell that the driver bought a very nice and expensive car. And of course, there is a massive ashtray in the center of this car, so all three people up front can easily access it. However, there is also an ashtray in the passenger door in case if they didn't want to have to reach over here. There are also sun visors up here in the ceiling. The driver one does not have a mirror, but the passenger one does. However, there aren't any lights there. And there is, of course, a center mirror and a lever beneath there to adjust it if someone has high beams on behind you. And in the ceiling is a very large light in the middle to light up the interior, but there are also reading lights up there as well. They shine very brightly and make it very easy for the front driver or passenger to read something at nighttime. Now in the back of the Continental Town Car, just like the twin comfort lounge seats up front, the seats back here are made in that nice media velour material, very soft and nice to the touch. The seats are also very squishy, very easy to relax and I'm sure fall asleep in. There's also a really nice pattern on the back of the seats, similar to the front ones. And there is a very large center armrest here so you can really just get nice and comfortable back here. You can stretch out your legs a bit because there is a lot of leg room here. So overall, a very pleasant place to be. And looking at the door panels, they're very similar to those up front. There's still really nice leather here, nice patterned wood and cloth and metal here for the ashtray and switches. And I especially like how there are window controls and light controls on the door panel itself. There is a window switch as well as a light switch to turn on the light by the passenger's heads back here. And speaking Speaking of these lights, they also have a little Lincoln badge in the middle of them. It kind of glows up with the light, so it looks especially luxurious and cool. Now that we've taken a look at the exterior and the interior of the Continental Town Car, let's go ahead and take it for a drive. Here we are, driving the 1976 Lincoln Continental Town Car. Driving a Lincoln versus a Cadillac, I gotta say, it is pretty amazing how similar uh, the ride is between the two. And of course they were competitors, they're building the same kind of cars for the same kind of people, but if I was to close my eyes, um, it would really feel like I'm driving a Cadillac. <laughs> oh, the steering is so loose. Very nice feeling though, very consistent, but it's really just wafting along. Just like many of the other cars, you could just use your pinky and literally guide it down the road. <laughs> Engine's got some power, but definitely nothing to brag about, that's for sure. <laughs> it really does just waft along. These seats are so cushiony. It is a boat. Just like the Cadillacs, it truly is a boat. So what I think is really cool about this particular Lincoln is that they still held on to their roots as a personal luxury car. And I think there were several ways in which they did that. Uh, firstly, it was still a very individualized car, still very personal. You could get at least 20 different exterior colors on this car. There are plenty of exterior and interior options which either change the looks of the vehicle, the color on the inside. So there's still a lot you could do to really make the Continental your own. And Lincoln did use a lot of sound deadening material when they built this car to make it a really 
nice and relaxed and quiet uh, inside of the vehicle. And actually each Continental came standard with what Lincoln called the super quiet sound package. Definitely not that clever of a name. I wonder where they got that from. But it definitely is a quiet ride in here. There aren't any squeaks or rattles. And these Lincolns were also known to have a very soft and comfortable ride. And this one certainly does. I believe that it was even considered to be better than Cadillacs at the time. But also personal luxury cars were intended to be a bit sporty as well. And uh, that's definitely one thing I would not say that this car is. It does not have a hint of sportiness whatsoever, considering it has a very uh, weak <laughs> V8 engine, only makes a little over 200 horsepower, uh, weighs like 5,300 pounds. So that's kind of one way in the personal luxury car it really doesn't fit. And I think it may also be important to touch a little bit more on what I think of the exterior and interior of this car. Uh, regarding the exterior, I think it's a bit more refined and subdued when compared to like a Cadillac Fleetwood from the time, which I think is a bit more bold and distinctive. Um, and as far as luxury cars go, I think that boldness is important for me. I do like the looks of Cadillacs from this time. Um, that's not to say I don't like the looks of this Lincoln. I love the way that the hood looks in front of you as you're driving with the fins up there. Um, the back end looks really cool with that light bar as the tail light. So there's a lot to like, um, but I think the Cadillac is still a bit more distinctive and iconic. And regarding the interior of this car, I definitely do really, really like it. Um, I think there are a lot more finer details in here with the way the wood looks, with the shape of the dashboard, especially the speedometer, the way that it looks and how it works. However it works, I don't even know <laughs> what it does to do what it does, but Lincoln really did pay attention to it and I think went a little bit beyond what most Cadillac interiors were from the time. And although Lincoln really put a lot of effort into this car, it didn't really seem to propel the Lincoln brand past Cadillac, at least maybe not numerically. And it seems like Lincoln is still in that same kind of dilemma, even with their cars today. However, production numbers don't necessarily tell the entire story. But as you all know, I am a diehard Cadillac fan. Cadillac is my favorite car brand, but this Lincoln has definitely reminded me that there is more out there than just wreaths and crests. And as a luxury car, this Lincoln Town Car certainly does give the Cadillac Fleetwood a run for its money, and then some. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed my review of the first ever Lincoln on this channel. <laughs> but what is really cool is that this car actually belongs to a 15-year-old kid. Um, he actually doesn't even have his driver's license yet, can't drive it <laughs> on his own. But he wanted something different and he ended up buying it and he's fixing it up and stuff. He does engine work on it. So a uh, big thanks goes out to him for uh, letting me borrow the car for a day. So I hope that you guys also enjoyed getting to spend some time with this Lincoln Continental. Please remember to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you all soon in the next video. Thank you.